Good morning. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Times. And we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In today's gospel, uh, today's second reading, St. Paul assures us that the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For those areas of our lives in which we need the Spirit's aid, let us ask God for mercy. Lord Jesus, you weed out evil from our world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you sow the seeds of faith among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again to unite us in everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us for power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
The Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed, seed, uh, sowed weeds throughout the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the evil, uh, where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until a harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to him. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when fully grown, it's the largest of plants. It becomes a, a large bush, and the birds of the sky come you know, and dwell in its branches. He spoke to him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Like a woman took and mixed uh, three measures of wheat flour uh, until the whole batch was leavened. All these things uh, Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said to the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. The disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said and replied, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows uh, them uh, is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who have caused others to sin and all evildoers. They'll be thrown into the fiery furnace while they'll be wailing and grinding their teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Last week, we heard Jesus telling a parable about the seed and several types of soil. Jesus continues using farming examples to explain the kingdom of heaven and uses the image of weeds and wheat. One thing I need to remember is that others, not just myself, desire, uh, deserve my patience too. But at times, this is hard for us to remember. If we're honest, we can brutally judge people. We see one bad trait in a person or one bad or terrible thing they did, and we think to ourselves, that person is worthless. This is a horrible thought to have, especially uh, for Catholics, uh, for, uh, for Christians, a follower of Christ. Do we ever find uh, ourselves reducing a person uh, to one bad habit or a terrible thing that they did? All we do is we think about that thing uh, that they did. Do we ever uh, go through uh, and do that with ourselves? 
focusing on the bad things that we do rather than good things? Do we ever struggle to see the good in people that sometimes tick us off? Well, welcome to the Christian family. We fall into that way of thinking pretty darn easily. That's why this week's gospel is good to read and reread from time to time. Notice that the farmer tells his workers not to pull up the weeds. He's afraid of damaging the good crops. He tells the workers, wait until the harvest. We'll separate everything out then. What patience and confidence that he had. He's not about, uh, nervous about the weeds destroying the, cro- the good crops. And that type of patience and confidence God has in each and every one of us. Each of us is a combination of good crop and weeds. God sees our character flaws and our sins, but he focuses more on the good things we do, how we're sprouting, the good traits, uh, and uh, positive things we do for others. So if people, uh, if God's patient with us, why can't we be patient with others and their flaws and their faults? If God looks so hard to see our goodness, why can't we look harder to see the goodness in those who sometimes irritate us? If God wants to affirm our strengths rather than judge us for our sins, why can't we go out of our way to affirm the good things we see in those people that frustrate us? Sure, we're not God. We must remind ourselves daily when we want to write someone off. So what can we do? We can pray for that person that we'd want to judge harshly and ask God's help uh, to see them uh, with his eyes, not ours. We can ask God for immediate help during these moments when we find ourselves judging others. Let us work to nurture the good crop that sometimes we do not see in others. Can we identify a good trait in uh, a person or two with whom we do not get along? If we judge others, even ourselves, by the one terrible thing or things that, uh, that they or we do? How often do we focus on the negative things of another person uh, on, uh, or on us rather than good things that they do? Let us change our focus on others and ourselves and focus on the good crop, the good and positive things that they or we will do. If we change our focus, we'll start to see them as God sees them, not as what others or we see them. What are, are we focusing on in others and ourselves? The negative or the positive? If the negative, then let's ask God to help us to fo- uh, uh, change our focus, to focus on the positive things uh, in ourselves and others. We'll begin to see as God sees, and that's a better, uh, better way to focus and look at others and us. So we need to ask ourselves, what is our focus on? And let us stand. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in the power of Christ to bring about healing and wholeness, let us place our knees before the Lord. That Christian leaders in our world have the courage to spread a word of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. That those who preach God's word never tire of its power and its purpose. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. That parish staff and other ministry teams are graced with hearts eager to listen and respond to the needs of the community. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died, for those who suffer during these trying times, for those who are joining us in prayer, both remotely and in person, and for all the personal mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, you sent your Son into the world to free creation from the bonds of sin and death so we might flourish. Hear our prayers that we might listen to Christ's teaching and allow our hearts to be transformed by his saving love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice and your hands. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that uh, what each of us has to offer to the honor of your majesty might benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our dear near salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, uh, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came uh, to the aid of our mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall uh, might through the means, be the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Amen. 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer your Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, George Leo our Bishop, Gregory our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy as we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, and unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace you grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of, Lamb God, of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Stay. 
and let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you've imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass from the former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the things I would encourage you to do is if you could please pray uh, for our archdiocese. Uh, on October 2nd, our Archbishop Thomas will be installed as Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Las Vegas. Uh, in preparation for that, on September 8th and 9th uh, at the Orleans uh, Hotel and Casino, we've got our diocesan conference. So please pray for the success of our, uh, of our diocesan conference, as well uh, as for uh, Archbishop Thomas uh, during this time of transition. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is in the Lord's come peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed week. Thank you.